It's part eight of our second conversation with Toto's Steve Picaro, and we talk about touring with Gary Wright in that Dreamweaver tour. I'm John Bowden. This is Rocky Stream Music. Dreamweaver reached number seven on the charts as an album released in the summer of 1975. I was very excited about it. Both Love is Alive and Dreamweaver, the two first singles, reached number two on the charts. Even though he came from a band called Spooky Tooth, a lot of us in North America, at least I wasn't at the time very familiar with the band, but loving Dreamweaver, I went back and listened to the old stuff. Mick Jones, a foreigner, was also in Spooky Tooth. Here's Steve Picaro. Gary Wright, Dreamweaver. I used to think, by the way, before you say anything, I used to think he was saying, when I first heard the song, nothing against Gary, I followed his career, uh, but I thought he was saying Chain Weaver. <laughs> <laughs> Fix the ears, I guess. That's you know, right. Hey, when uh, Manfred Mann is singing that Springsteen tune and he's saying, wrapped up like a deuce, I didn't think it was deuce. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded, yeah. sounded a lot like something else to yeah. me. You know? yeah. What was it like with Gary, and how did, how does a gig like that happen? I mean, dig it. It, it was amazing. I was just I wasn't even out of high school. I was uh, I had just finished the first half of high school. Um, my brother Jeff had helped David Foster get established in town, and David was uh, David's career was just taking off, and. Um, he had just done, and we'd become friends. I would hang out at his house sometime with his, uh, he had a sister and, and uh, his wife, and, and uh, we would all hang. And I remember, I remember when David coming home from the Gary Wright sessions. You know, I wasn't on the album Dreamweaver at all. That was mostly, that was, uh, um, that was David Foster and this guy Bobby Lyle, great keyboard player, Bobby Lyle uh, also, and Gary, of course. You know, Foster just, I think, really, you know, Foster was on fire in those days. His just career was doing this. And uh, he went in and pretty much made that record, I think. You know what I mean? I know there was a producer there. but uh, um, And Gary, too. Gary played great bass parts and did these cool synth things on there. Anyway, um, soon, very soon after he finished the record, uh, before I even think anything, before it was even released, he was putting together a tour and called David Foster and had, uh, you know, was... Uh, I was paying 200 bucks a week looking for a guy who could play since. And I had just auditioned. I was dying to follow my brother's footsteps and be on the road. And I auditioned for um, a guy named Mac Davis. If you remember who Mac Davis is? I auditioned because he was looking for just kind of a second keyboard, kind of sent the guy. Michael Boddicker, I think, recommended me for that gig, and I didn't get it. And then very soon after that, I auditioned for Tim Buckley, who was really looking for like a jazzer kind of guy, which was wow. – Totally not me. I didn't get that audition. But um, and then I got called for Gary. Uh, David Foster asked me if I'd be interested. I mean, I was still in school at the time. But if I you know what I mean, if there's any way I'd go on the road with Gary and uh, I borrowed my friend's mini Moog. A, kid, a friend of mine in high school had a mini Moog, and I marked, you know, I made some bass sounds and marked them on the knobs and went in there and I. Uh, um, Art Wood, the drummer, was just setting up as I was setting up, and we just jammed. We just were kind of jamming on E for, you know, doing kind of a funk groove or something, and and uh, for like 10 minutes and with Gary, and we stopped, and Gary goes, you got the job, you know? And my mom, uh, I, was, I was gone. I was out of there, but my mom went to the school and got me on this thing called student furlough, so I was able to get my diploma. They let me be on the road for my second half of my senior year. God. There was, uh, that, was he playing, did he play Spooky Tooth stuff when he was on, on that tour? Uh, maybe. There might, you know, I was so unfamiliar with Spooky Tooth. A lot of people are. And so we probably did. There were a few tunes that weren't from his album that might have been, yeah. you know, Spooky Tooth tunes, you know. One more from Steve Picaro coming up next week, next Thursday. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. And buy a t-shirt if you can. It helps support our channel. We're trying to buy some new equipment. We're trying to expand. Links in the description of this video. I'm John Bowden. This is Rocky History Music. Mm -hmm.